Well, we liked how Jake Evans was playing with the Paul Byron and Arturi Lekkanen lineup. Uh, well, the line anyway, just before the uh, end of the regular season. Do you think Jake Evans' strong play reduces the odds of the Canadians? Oh, I don't know. Potentially re-signing Phil Deneau. Do you think those two players are directly related? How do you think that all shapes up? I, I think they are directly related in a way because I think if Mark Bergevin believes that Jake Evans can fill Philip Deneau's role, maybe not right up to 100% of where Philip Deneau is now, but can see in the future that he, he can be a Philip Deneau. Uh, he's obviously a lot cheaper than Philip Deneau, so that would give him money to spend on maybe finding another goal scorer or puck moving defensemen, which are really two priorities, I think, with this team. So I think it has reduced the the chances of Philip Deneau re-signing here. Uh, I just I, I think you know Philip Deneau, some thirty other teams in the NHL are going to want Philip Deneau. There's a lot of he can fit in well on a lot of hockey teams. You know if he's your second or third line center, you got a pretty good hockey team. Um, so you know his he's he's not going to give a hometown discount discount to stay here. I think he's made that pretty clear. Um, so I think. It, I think Evans has definitely reduced the likelihood of, of Philip Denel coming back here because uh, I believe he's shown that he, he can be that defensive forward. Uh, you know, he went 41 games without a goal, uh, but with more ice time and uh, playing with better line mates, if he was to step into that that spot, uh, I think Evans can. I don't think he'll be Philip Denel right away, but I think he's maybe a couple of years away from becoming Philip Denel, and it just frees up money that Mark Bergevay can spend elsewhere. And I have to think that he's probably thinking that way right now. Yeah, I think that he definitely could fill that role. I agree with you, Stu, that he's, but he's still a few years away from that. And I think that is sort of the problem is, do the Montreal Canadiens want to go with so many young centermen? And we saw this year that that's why they went down and got stalled, that they felt that they still needed that kind of veteran guy to, to help these young players out. So I think the timing of this is a little bit bad if you're Mark Bergevin that you kind of wish that Philip Deneau still had another year on his contract and then you can kind of see Jake Evans after a, a year more of learning that role, learning under Philip Deneau and seeing what he can do and his ability to shut down star players like uh, Connor McDavid. Um, but I think just because of how young the, the centermen's are on this team. It, it's a little bit of a difficult time to to really turn the page and, and give Jake uh, Jake Evans that that position. Now that he's been given an opportunity to play, Jake Evans has been one of the most improved players I think on the hockey club as of late. And you know, at 24 years old, he's got lots of upside moving forward. And judging by the type of game that he plays, he's a gritty type of kid. Uh, he's going to get better in the faceoff circle. Uh, he brings great stuff uh, defensively. He's pretty, pretty intelligent guy, and he also, uh, you know, can do things as much as Dano on the offensive side. And I think that this is going to tap into the mindset of, uh, you know, what do you do with Philip Dano? I think that uh, you have to ser seriously consider uh, Jake Evans as a kid that has got great, great potential to become better and probably fill that that void in the event that uh, you know Philip Dano uh, is not resigned. I also think Dano was upset that the, you know, him apparently turning down that contract offer was leaked. Uh, you have to figure it was leaked from the Canadians. Uh, I think that didn't sit well with him. It let him, it affected his play, I believe, uh, earlier in the season. Uh, and the other thing, though, the factor into this with all the heat that the Canadians took for not having a francophone player in the roster for the first time in their history recently, uh, you know, if Philip Dano leaves, What's the uproar going to be about that? And Mark, you know, Jeff Molson doesn't only own a hockey team. He owns a brewery. He owns other businesses. And he, you know, is he, from a marketing standpoint, is he going to be willing to let, you know, one of the francophone players walk? Uh, I think we saw what I think we can anticipate what the reaction would be to that uh, from some of the fan base and some of the media. So I wonder how much that might factor into the decision also. That's a really interesting point, too, considering who knows what's going to happen with Jonathan Drouin's future with the Montreal Canadiens as well. A lot of questions to be asked if you are Jeff Molson and the Montreal Canadiens organization. Uh, what do you think, you watching this video at home? Thank you, by the way, for watching all of our videos, and hopefully you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. Uh, let us know in the comments section what you think, and visit HockeyInsideOut.com to check out our full episode. <laughs>